Everybody. Just so glad to see you back in the Lord's house. My name is Rory Thigpen. <laughs> so glad to see each and every one. Hope you've had a wonderful week and looking forward to our study tonight. Any announcements you'd like to share with us? Hey. Yes. Uh, all of our quarterly is going to be here. Our new quarterly is the next quarter. The journey is going to be all magazine. Also, I'm taking out money for the party. <laughs> Anybody wants to give? But remember, it does have to be in by the 21st. What are we talking about? Hey, anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, I told the meeting pastor, he had to bring up the uh, Saturday morning 9 o'clock prayer for his church. So if anyone has anything in church that she might have one of you, she might want to be here for you. That's pretty straightforward. So let's make sure those watching this at home realize if uh, you're not here, like to participate, cleanup day here at the church, Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. We'd also like to make a mention that we are back in Sunday school full force. And I'd like to mention for those that may be watching at home, uh, we'd love to have you come out and be a part of each class. We have wonderful teachers. Uh, we have mixed uh, with men and women classes. We have an all-ladies class. We have men and children classes. And so I know that 
there is a place for you if you would like to come. So please come join us. Sunday school begins at 9 o'clock and worship at 10. Anyone else? Okay, in the way of prayer, let's remember Miss Lucy Ridgway. She's had her surgery. Mary, will you give us an update? She's doing okay. She's, they had her on oxygen today with her heart and her load. And they kept her in the ICU when they needed him. And yesterday, they keep an eye on her blood pressure if they get the blood. So she's getting better. Amen. <laughs> I went to see her this afternoon. And she was doing fine. She uh, still trying to talk her into rehab. But we'll see if that happens or not. Also, Brother Benny is in a procedure even now. They're doing an MRI and trying to figure out different tests. Uh, maybe procedure is the wrong word. Uh, they're running some tests on him. So be much in prayer for Benny. He's had some ongoing health issues for quite a while now. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. And please remember, really one thing we can count to get is God's Amen. Very simple. Yes. That was great. I had prayer to a friend of mine for me. Yes, sir, Walter. Uh, my daughter is coming Sunday to take me to Virginia to have a baby Thanksgiving with my grandchildren and all my family over there. So, have a prayer. I know I won't have a wonderful time. I'm sure I won't care. Amen. I hope you enjoy your trip. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. I was with Larry Anderson there for about an hour. Thank you, and uh, he's still mighty weak. And he told me he had lost 30 pounds. Larry can't, he can't. He said he's eating, but he can't gain no weight. He's trying to get his strength back. Anybody want to pray for him? Yeah, I talked to Linda, and that's what she told me. He had lost 30 pounds. He just is in a recliner a lot because of lack of energy. But he was trying to do yard work. So uh, keep Larry much in prayer. Anyone else? Uh, please continue to remember Susan, and also my dad. He's doing very poorly, but continue to remember him. How about by the uplifted hand? Lord we'll knows our desires. Brother David, so good to welcome you back. Would you lead us in prayer tonight? Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to be back in our house again, dear Lord. And we just appreciate everything that you do for us each and every day. It's the numbers that one Stephen mentioned, dear Lord, that you do for us that we don't. You're nowhere near grateful for us. Yes. We appreciate everything, and we ask that you be with all those who are sick tonight, dear Lord. Be with their service and bring us back there at this point of time again, dear Lord. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all ready? All right. We're ready for you. All right. Tonight is the sixth day of the night. Sometimes I'm very nervous. They don't know. But anyway, it's very short. Y'all know it. Thank you, Lord. We're going to do something, and then we'll see what y'all can do on this phone. Put that in your mind. Back away from my phone. Do not get into my phone. What you want to be heard all over everybody else, and get in my phone. Okay? And it may be kind of low because I'm starting, so there you go. Thank you, Lord.
that hurt up. All right. Hey, one announcement I forgot to mention is next Wednesday, our tradition or custom here at the church is to not have a Wednesday night service for all of those that are preparing for the Thanksgiving day to allow the cooking and the family coming in. And so no service next Wednesday night. Just remember that. Tonight we're going to look in the Bible to Revelation chapter 16, the bowls of wrath, and that covers the whole chapter. We'll only cover nine verses tonight, verses one through nine, which takes us through, I believe, four of the bowls. And so we'll be looking at this in detail in just a few minutes. Uh, remember that this time of judgment is the wrath of God being poured out on a Christ-rejecting world. Let's begin in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you and lift you up and ask your blessings now upon our study tonight. And Lord, whether we're gathered together physically or gathered together spiritually, uh, Father, we know that there are many watching us uh, through the Facebook, and, and we thank you, Lord, for that. And many are very appreciative that we have this broadcast in that way so they can be a part of what uh, we are studying. So we ask your continued blessings upon each and every one of us, whether we're here physically or at home or wherever we may be at, that we can be united in spirit and in truth to hear your word and then to apply your word to our hearts and lives. Help us as we go through the scripture tonight to be reminded and also, Lord, to be able to go out and share it with others. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In fact, I was talking to Lori yesterday, and every time I talk with her, she mentions how appreciative she is that we broadcast this because she cannot be with us physically with all her health ailments. But she watches uh, through the Facebook Live and said, she said thank you over and over again. So uh, we just appreciate uh, what the fellows are doing back there and, and how they help get this out. Revelation 16, 1 through 9. Let me take you to a verse before we go there. Matthew 24, verse 21. Matthew 24, verse 21. So listen to what it says. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No nor ever shall be. And so the great distress that Jesus is speaking of is in the last half of what we know as the great tribulation. It's concerning the judgments, the bold judgments, and the, the vile judgments, which are one and the same. And once again, in the last half, towards the end of the tribulation period, this time of judgment is the wrath of God being poured out on a Christ-rejecting world. And, and what we're going to see in each study, uh, it did not only be tonight, but then our next study when we come back, that every angel has a specific target for the contents of the bowls. Now, when the bowls are poured out, there are seven of them. We're going to see the first bowl with sores upon all of those uh, humans that have received the mark of the beast. There are going to be seals turned to blood. We're going to see rivers turn to blood, great heat uh, from the sun, uh, darkness upon all the earth. The Euphrates is dried up to allow all the kingdoms to come together to fight in that battle called Armageddon. And then we're going to see hell come down. And so we'll be discussing this one by one. All right, look at Revelation 16, verse 1. Revelation 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. In our last two studies, we studied about the seven angels, uh, that magnificent seven we call them, who were together for a specific uh, purpose, and that is to pour out the vows of wrath upon the earth at God's word. Then we noticed that they were receive these from one of the four beasts and he give the angels the vials of wrath, the bowls of wrath and they were to go out. So now we see, I heard a great voice. This is John speaking. John the Revelator. He is the one that is seeing all of this 
take place, he's also hearing as it is spoken. And what is going on? I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. And so this great voice, who could that be? I believe it is Jesus Christ. Listen now, uh, I didn't write down all the scripture for y'all to read. I mean, if you want to look it up when I'm looking it up, but I want to read this one in particular. Revelation chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Listen to what it says about the great voice. Revelation 1, 10 through 18. This is John speaking. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos, <laughs> unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the patch with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of the, his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. And so I wanted to read that to you, because that is the description of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the Revelation time. And so it mentions he had a great voice, and then it gives his description and now in chapter 16, verse 1, John says, I heard a great voice. And what was this great voice saying? He was commissioning the seven angels that were standing ready to go out and do uh, what their purpose was. To each angel was given a bow or a bowl of wrath, and they were to go in rapid succession. They were not to go out all at once. But one at a time, first one goes, second one goes, third one goes, then the fourth one, all the way through the seventh. And so one at a time, whenever the word is given them, they are to go out and not only pour the contents, but pour it all out. Sometimes we may pour some milk out of a jug and, and towards the end of it, we may have a little bit left and we just throw it in the garbage can. But no, not with the bowls of wrath. Every bit that is inside the bowls of wrath are poured out in judgment upon this earth. And so, Revelation 16, verse 2 says this, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And so the first bowl that is poured out is the sores upon all of mankind that had received the mark of the beast. What about those who had not received the mark? Well, they are preserved. They're taken care of. God is watching over them. You remember when the three Hebrew boys went through the burning, fiery furnace? They were not singed, were not burned. The ropes were burnt off of them. They had coats on, they had hats on. So surely, common sense says, well, they should have burned up. But the will of God was that they should be preserved in the fire. And so we see that these, when the sores are given out to all the mankind that has received the mark of the beast and worship uh, that golden image, uh, they will receive the bowls, but not those who trust in God. There will be many people in the tribulation time who will turn to God for salvation. Many of these will end up giving their lives. But many more will be alive all the way through until they enter into the millennial reign. 
And so we see that in this judgment here, it introduces very painful sores or boils upon human beings. When I think about a boil, I think about a sore, I always think of Job. You remember the devil afflicted him with sore boils from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And they were very grievous, sore, hurtful, painful sores that were open and pus would come out. And it was uh, just very hard to deal with these all over the body. Can you imagine sleeping at night, trying to lay down, get some rest? Can you imagine just going about your duties every day? Sore boils from the top of the head to the sole of his feet. And these will be afflicted with these sore boils. Now, during the Great Tribulation, what is happening is the Antichrist is being worshipped. And so all of those that turn to the Antichrist and reject Jesus Christ, they're the ones who will receive the sore bowls upon their person. And by the way, all the believers will be protected, but the sore bowls afflict so much pain, even after several of the bowls of wrath are poured out, even as they continue dealing one uh, judgment after another, they are still in great pain from the sore bowls. We find in verses 10 and 11 of this same chapter, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blaspheming the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repenting not of their deeds. So the sores are still afflicting them, even after the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh judgment. They are still dealing with this first judgment of the painful sores all over them. Look in verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Every living soul <coughs> died in the sea. Now, we have seen God turn a third of the sea into blood through the trumpet judgments. Uh, in chapter 8 of Revelation, verse 8 and 9, you'll see the second trumpet when it sounded, and one third of the ocean life is uh, affected by the blood. And one third of the animal life in the waters died because of the blood. Imagine how terrible it's going to be when God sends the angel out and this judgment is upon all of the sea and all marine life dies. Imagine the stench. Have you ever walked on the beach when a bunch of pogies have washed up? Huh? I, mean, I used to set nets all the time. I had two nets I would set and we used to do it on the beach when it was low tide and walk it out and let high tide come in, low tide go back out and pull the nets up. And many times you'd see pogies all over the beach. And it'd be terrible, the stench of the pogies that would be on washed up shore. And so we're going to see that it's going to be horrible. In the fact, it's going to be uh, just an eyesore with all the deadness of the marine life. It's going to be a stench in the nostrils with all the smell that no doubt uh, will be uh, upon everyone as they come in contact with this. But then it's going to create a financial burden as well for many of those who depend on marine life for their source of income. We have a lot of folks that depend on the marine life when they go out shrimping or fishing and bring it all back in. Much less all of us that love to eat fish. They ain't going to have no more fish after this because they're going to be gone. And so we're going to see that this is going to affect in a great way all that pertains to the sea. Now, I didn't mention it, but a lot of these that we're mentioning tonight, and you'll see it up on the board, uh, they pertain and have a resemblance to some of the plagues that back during Moses' day, such as the uh, sore bowls. Uh, that was a plague. Uh, when Moses lifted up the ashes and, and it spread, notice that the Israelites, they were not affected. But all the Egyptians, they were affected. Even if they were themselves affected with the sore bowls. Even the magicians, 
The Bible says the magicians were affected and they could no longer do any more magic because they were hurting so bad and the sore balls had affected them so much they put their magic tricks in a bag and went home and just tried to suffer along with everybody else. So now we see the second bowl, which is the marine life in the oceans are affected. But then notice once again, we think about uh, bowl number three, Revelation 16, 4 through 7. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And so this is reminiscent of the very first Egyptian plague. You remember when the water turned to blood back during the days of Moses as well. And so God is going to destroy not only all the marine life and turn the oceans into blood, but now the fresh water supplies, the rivers and the streams and the ponds and the lakes and anything that where they can drink is going to turn to blood. It's going to be a, a famine of water. And they're going to suffer greatly. Imagine the panic on this earth where there's no water. I mean, we have a disaster. Water is shipped in us. We have a, a, a disaster, whether it's here or whether it's in some other continent. Always one of the supplies that is trying to uh, give to the people to relieve them is water. Because water is in such demand when we go through a tragedy. Because electricity is off, we can't pump water. Uh, very few people have manual wells anymore. And so water is a great commodity that will be in demand. But during this time, there's not going to be no water. It's going to all turn to blood is what the scripture says. In fact, this blood is corrupt blood, which will breed disease and pestilence. It's interesting what we find here that the angel in charge of the waters proclaims the justification of this judgment. Listen to what it says again. And the third angel poured out his vials upon the rivers and fountains of waters and they became blood. And I heard the angel <coughs> of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And so the angel of the waters says, Amen, God. You've done them just like they've done your prophets. You give them blood to drink just like they pour the blood of your prophets and your saints all through the years. And so the blood of unbelievers, uh, rather the blood that the unbelievers will be drinking, is in resemblance to the blood they have shed throughout the years. Satan and all of those who have sided with him. So Dr. Warren Wearsby, he says of these verses, this comment, Heaven gives justification for this terrible judgment. The earth dwellers have shed the blood of God's people. So it is only right that they should drink blood. In God's government, the punishment always fits the crime. Pharaoh tried to drown the Jewish boy babies, but it was his own army that eventually drowned in the Red Sea. Haman planned to hang Mordecai on the gallows and to exterminate the Jews, but it was he himself that was hanged on the gallows and his family was exterminated. King Saul refused to obey God and slay the Amalekites, yet in the end he was slain by an Amalekite. Daniel's accusers, they wanted him to be eat up by the lions, but instead it was they who were eat up by the lions. God always recompenses someone's crimes 
to their punishment. He always gives back what people try to give out. Now notice as we close it out for tonight, verses 8 and 9, the bowl number 4. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And so we see that during this bowl of wrath, the sun is going to be shining in all its strength. And the heat that will be bearing down, the heat waves, such as has never been before. You know, we've gone through some heat waves, haven't we? We think about sometimes in the summer, man, that sun is so hot. We out there trying to hold the garden. And we're just moving the sweat out or we're trying to work and do something outside and it's hot. Sometimes we're at the beach and we're not in the waters. So for some reason, just love to get a suntan and that sun is bearing down on us. But let me tell you something. When our power goes out and that sun starts beating down, it gets mighty hot. In the nighttime, we can get some relief. Because the sun's rays are not bearing down. Even though the humidity might be high. Even though we might have to deal with the humidity. The sun's rays are not actually beating down at nighttime. But not so here. What we find here is that the sun's rays are beating down on each and every one. Who proclaims the Antichrist is the one they follow. See none of these bold judgments are against God's people. They're preserved. These bold judgments are against those who have accepted the Antichrist and followed <coughs> his ways. And so the sun will be shining at full power. No relief. The sun will be so hot it will begin to scorch the people. Now I've had the sun burn. How about y'all? It's not very pleasant, is it? And then, how clear every time you get a sun burn, this is what happens. How you doing? <laughs> Somebody end up beating us on the back. And we'll go, oh! We're, we're crying with the pain. These will be scorched by the heat that the sun gives out. They will be given a taste of hell to come. Think about that. They're just going to be given a taste of the torment of hell in the flames and the heat that will torment their souls. Constant burning with no water to drink. No water. Only blood to quench their thirst. Now surely lost people would turn to God in such a time as this, wouldn't they? But this shows how hardened these people will be. They not only will not turn to God, but they will begin to curse God. Notice what it says. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And so you would think when people go through hard times, well, there's only one or two ways you're going to respond when you go through a hard time. You're either going to turn to God or you're going to turn from God. You're either going to turn to him or you're going to reject him and like these begin to curse him. And you and I, we all know people who's gone through some hard times and instead of turning to God, they turn on God. They blame him for what has happened in their lives. You know, I've had a preacher Want to know how come I never got mad at God after my son died? He said, how come you never got mad at God? He was going through some things with his children, uh, health-wise, and he said, I let God hold it. I let him know I was mad. And I said, well, if that's the way you dealt with it, that's on you. I have never felt compelled to blame God. Don't understand it, but I trust him. And I've always wondered, why did he want to down me for my response when I never downed him for his response? We all respond in different ways. 
But the truth is, some people get closer to God in tragedy, and some people turn away from God when tragedy hits. And so we see here, all that's going on, you would think, well, they're going to turn to God after this, but not so. They begin to curse him. Now, here's what J. Vernon McGee says. This reveals that the human heart is incurably wicked. No amount of punishment will purify it and change it. The only thing that can change a man or a woman's heart is Jesus Christ. If you're not willing to listen to Jesus and turn to him, your heart's going to grow harder and harder. Remember Pharaoh during Moses' time? His heart grew harder and harder. Then he'd back off a little bit and say, all right, Moses, go on and take your people away from it. Then he'd have a change of heart. And then he'd say, no, nope, y'all not going nowhere. And he would harden his heart. Many times over, if you'll read that whole passage of all the plagues, Pharaoh hardened his heart over and over. That's the way a lot of people are doing today. Instead of turning to God and turning from God, and their heart is getting harder. Let me close out with a scripture for tonight. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Listen to what it says. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do weakly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. That sun is going to be bearing down. Uh, and the, the end is not yet. There's more judgments coming. The end is not until the battle of Armageddon. And then we know that the earth is going to be renovated by fire. You say, well, what happens to the people, the, the people that are going to make it into the millennial reign, what happens to them when the earth is being renovated by fire? Well, I take you once again to the three Hebrew boys. They're in the burning fire furnace and they were preserved in that burning fire furnace. When the earth is renovated by fire, uh, all the people that trust in God that will make it into the linear rain, they'll be preserved through that transition. And we'll get there when we get to chapter 21. Uh, chapter 19 through 21, and, and we talk about these future events. Any comments? Any questions? Yeah, if there's no if there's no water, how does the slaves live? Because you got to have water. We don't know. We you don't can't know. live without water. But you, you notice what the scripture said: you give them blood to drink. Now this is towards the end, so we're we're not told how long this will last. We're not told how long a period of span. We normally think it's going to be three and a half years. No, the three and a half years are the last part of the Great Tribulation. And it's towards the end of that three and a half year period when these bold judgments are given out in rapid succession. So this is towards the very end of the Tribulation when all this is taking place. And so I, I don't know the answer because we all know you got to have water to live. But you read where they where the angel said, you give them blood to drink. Now, I don't know how long that will sustain them. But it, it stands to reason, because there's no the water, they'll try to drink the blood. But you know they can't last long way. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, we're grateful, Lord, for this night you give us. We thank you, Lord, for the scripture that challenges our hearts and causes us to want to study deeper and further. And Father, we, we just praise your name and thank you that those of us who are saved will not have to face this time that we're reading about now. But, but Father, we all know someone who is yet to call upon you for salvation. And because we love them and care for them, we don't want them to have to be here. And so give us wisdom and give us courage to go out and speak and say the things that you would have us to, to win people to Christ. And we'll give you the glory and praise in all of it. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.